Hi everyone, Joe here again. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, our last video, we went over this Maraca Bell foot pedal that I've put together based on some LP gear. And as promised, the second video is going to look at the whole kit that I've put together. This is my one player Latin setup, my one player Calypso engine room. Uh, so let's go through this stuff real quick. I've got my congas here as kind of the centerpiece. I have them set backwards from a normal right-handed player because my left hand is going to be doing most of the conga playing. My right hand is going to be over here playing this rig. So that's why I have them set like that. When it's one-handed, you're doing different stuff anyways. When it's two-handed, you have to reverse your patterns, uh, but that's good for you anyways. I've got my bongo here. Like I said, I've got uh, my maraca and cowbell pedal down here on my left foot. On my right foot, I'm sitting on a cajon that's got a pedal. So I've got a nice kick there. It's not as full as a drum set, but again, this is supposed to be kind of pared down. So it's got a kick. This is one of the LP uh, cajones that has the internal beater on the inside of the cajon, which is really nice because then the beater doesn't get in the way of your leg. Um, or you don't have to worry about cables or playing with your heel. So that's really nice. It's a bit pricey compared to some of the others, but for me it was worth it. Uh, but any cajon would work for some kind of kick. Next to it, I've got uh, another gajate bracket with a clave and a cha bell on one of their you know, rotating stands. So. I can alternate in my right foot to play the kick or those two things alternating. Uh, we're not going to use that for the calypso today, but that'll come into play when I go over the salsa and related parts there. And then over here, I've got this crazy rig. Um, I've got a LP side timbale. It's a smaller timbale, a 12 inch with a shallow shell. It's You could use a full timbale, but it's a bit too loud and takes up a lot of space. So this works really well for me. I really like the sound and the feel of this guy. Uh, I've got the contra campana that you would normally have above the timbales here. So the right hand could be doing that while the left hand is playing the congas. I've got a really tiny cowbell, just for fun. Symbol, of course. Down here, you might not be able to see, but I've got a small wiro. This is a, a pearl wiro that's got a wira attachment to it. So that comes in handy just to have extra timbres, extra colors. And then, this stuff is kind of cool. I've got a tamborim that has a mount on it and snares underneath, so that gives me my snare sound. And above it, this is made by Panyard Inc. It's called the Ting, T-I-N-G, and it is a mountable brake drum. It's small, uh, and again, that's good for this setup, but it's a metal T-bar in a sense that they've mounted on rubber and then a uh, jack to hold it onto it, and so you can play iron So that's really cool. So with this rig, my right hand can add a lot of the other parts that are incorporated in Calypso and I don't have to focus just on the conga. So if we now look at Calypso, the rhythm itself, I could show you how I'm putting this all together and picking which parts I'm gonna play. Anytime you do these one man band things, you always have to get rid of the stuff that you feel is being duplicated to try and free up some space and find the really important notes and put those together and then practice the interdependence that you need in your limbs to do it. So I used the classic parts and then adapted them slightly to make them fit a little bit better on the rig. Classic conga calypso pattern. Because I'm going to be doing that one-handed, 
for most of the time, I'm going to take out the eighth note on beat three. So it sounds like this. So when I'm doing it with just my left hand, my left hand isn't going to fall off after 30 seconds of playing that. Every once in a while, I'll play the whole pattern, but I can't do that forever because it does really start to wear you out. So that's the conga pattern. Another crucial element of calypso is the shaker or the scraper or the shock shock, as it might be called in Trinidad. So my left foot is covering that part already. No scraper necessarily, but we've got the maraca there. Also having someone playing the downbeat, either on a cowbell or on a wood block or a jam block. So again, my left foot is covering both those parts. And for a description of that pedal, uh, see the description links below uh, for the first video that I made that goes over specifically what that is and how I came up with that. Then over here, we've got the iron. So my right hand is going to play that. Classic iron pattern, one, two, three, four. I'm going to take that pattern and invert it. So I'm going to put the three beats on the first half of the uh, measure and then the uh, two up beats on the second half, and you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to play it. One, two, three, four. And that'll fit in in a second, and you'll understand why. Finally, the drum set pattern. Obviously, I'm not playing a full drum set, but I do have a kick sound and a snare sound, so I can play the accented patterns. I'm going to leave out the hi-hat, one, because I don't have that many limbs, but also because the maraca is there covering those eighth notes, those sixteenth notes. So I can... And I can go up to the cymbal if I want it to be big for a louder section. So now you can understand why the iron is set up that way. My right hand can then go all the upbeats and not play a downbeat and play the iron and the snare at the same time. So it would be one, two, three, four. With the kick, one. Two, three, four. Okay? So, take all that, put it together, and you have options. You have a lot of options. I'm going to try and put all this together. It's something I'm still working on, so it's not perfect yet, but it's good interdependence exercises to be practicing while we're all sitting at home. I'm going to show you a couple different ways of playing it, whether you're in a just grooving calypso section, whether you're in a down, maybe solo or a quiet section, you just want congas and shock shock, or if you're way up, a shout section, you want cymbal, and kind of go between them. Uh, one really nice thing about this whole setup is you have tons of options of combinations. What can you take out? What can you put in? What can you alter? So you have a lot of variety even as one player, which is why I have so much stuff. Now, when you're using this, I tend to like this rig for duos, trios, quartets with pan. Uh, it does take a serious amount of practice. Again, we're all sitting at home, so if you need something to shed while you're watching Netflix, work on that interdependence. The real tricky thing is getting, for me, the left foot on autopilot. <laughs> keeping that going without having to think about it while doing this independence thing. That alternating which hands are together and on which drum and when are they on their own takes some time, and it's something I'm still working on. But let me see if I can put this all together for you. Uh, I'll take the headset off, play all that. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll do one more of these videos with this rig covering 
salsa and related styles, and then I'll do some examples of playing this uh, overdubbed with me playing some pan, so you can see it, it how I intend it in a small ensemble, in a duo or a trio. Stay safe, stay healthy, practice weird stuff. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. <laughs>